Although this carpet may seem like it's one piece, it's actually made up of several that can be recycled separately. Cal officials say they'll warn protesters 10 minutes before cops move in to give them enough time to leave and to avoid being arrested. In Berkeley, B. Earl Dunn, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Even though it was the eve of Friday the 13th, many passengers felt lucky. After all, they were flying in a 777. A skull and some bones were found in San Joaquin County as crews continued digging up a well in search for the victims of serial killing duo Wesley Shermantine and Lauren Herzog. The remains of three victims have been found in two different locations within the last three days. The first was found in Calaveras County and the last two here in Linden. According to bounty hunter Leonard Padilla, Shermantine said there are more than one set of remains. It's exactly what he was saying. Yeah, it's out here, so let's just keep going. You know, don't stop now. Shermantine, along with his childhood friend, is responsible for 20 to 30 murders in the 1980s and 90s. The two, dubbed the Speed Freak Killers, who were killing people while high on meth, were caught in 1999. Herzog committed suicide in January. Shermantine is still in death row, and Padilla says he offered him $32,000 to give police the location of his victims. Teenagers who live in Linden and work at the land right by the well say they were surprised. He just never thought that they had this bad of stuff going on. Crews are wrapping up for tonight, but authorities say the search could go on all weekend. In San Joaquin County, B. Earl Dan, KTVU, Channel 2 News. We're here in Union Square, and if you can take a look behind me, cab traffic is now back to normal. This afternoon, hundreds of cabs took to the streets, but they weren't taking any fares. San Francisco City Hall was surrounded with a sea of yellow, white, and red. Cab drivers protested against many issues, mainly the 5% credit card fee. Cab driver Ahmad al Bawaya says the charge cuts into his and other cab drivers' bottom line. So when I go to the airport and the customer give me four dollars, give me two dollars tip, two dollars to the cab company. It's not going to me because they charge me four percent. Cab drivers took their concerns to City Hall. They want the municipal hall to take action. To take the five percent, I could be fair for the cab driver. The MTA says they have already tried to resolve the problem. So what we try to do was um, increase their income, and, and we've done that halfway by increasing. Uh, the, the wages for the distance and time rates, um, and we look to increase the flag drop as well. Cab drivers made a real effort to be heard. LeBon Wade, who's been hailing taxis for 20 years, says he noticed. So I can tell there's a lot less taxis that are out, but there still are a few guys driving, you know. It's a recession, you know. But cab passengers say they didn't even right. notice any change. Uh, we arrived at the airport and within minutes we had a cab. San Francisco's MTA is set to have a meeting later on this month and they will decide whether to increase the initial price of a cab ride. In San Francisco, B. Earl Dunn, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Good evening, I'm B. Earl Dunn. Oakland police are investigating a shooting that left a man dead right outside a house where he was seeking help. Investigators say the police shot spotter picked up 10 shots fired at 78th Avenue at about 2 o'clock this morning. They say the victim ran to a home on Arthur Street, yelling and banging on the door for help. People inside called 911, but the young man died at the scene. There have been no arrests. Still come, a carjacking suspect who caused this traffic nightmare is dead tonight. How officials say it happened. And two Bay Area women's soccer teams face off for a cause. How Cal and Stanford are coming together to help a special little girl.